a motor home is born, costing well over 100,000 euros. From bare chassis to finished vacation home on wheels, including luxurious lounge area and exclusive decor. RVing has never been more popular. This is where the traveling vacation homes are built. The rest of the B column needs to be removed. The walls of the motorhome are milled out by a CNC router. Precision work. When everything's perfectly set up, it's accurate to a millimeter. The entire interior is fabricated in the in-house cabinet making shop, and the kitchen appliances are fitted at the same time. Safety is paramount when it comes to the stove. We have to make sure that the connections are 100% gas tight. Mass producing motorhomes with the greatest possible flexibility. We have over 220 different floor plans and every worker has to be familiar with them all. Final inspection, the search for mistakes and damage. Here, for example, my colleague has discovered a scratch. We'll have to swap this part out. And everything watertight? Final check in the rain simulator. One of Europe's largest RV manufacturers is based in Jandelsbrunn, Lower Bavaria. The company's 1,500 workers build around 26,000 RUVs and caravans each year. The flagship model is the three-axle Knaus Sun E900. It's nearly 9 meters long, 2.35 meters wide, and around 3 meters high. The company manufactures most of their interior and outer skin on site. At prices ranging between 120 and 150,000 euros, luxury comes as standard. A huge amount of space, fine leather upholstery, four generously proportioned beds, plus a bathroom with shower cubicle and a separate toilet. Technical refinements, like a concealed television in the living area, a fully equipped kitchen with three burner stove and fridge freezer round off the interior equipment features. A parking lot next to the enormous production buildings serves as a holding area for the motorhome chassis. The mobile basis for over two thirds of all RVs built in Germany come from Italy. The Fiat Ducato van chassis are delivered more or less naked the driver sits atop a wooden crate. The rolling chassis is being delivered to a specialist automotive engineering company based just 300 meters away. Here, the experts modify the chassis to allow the motorhome superstructure to be built on it later. The mechanics remove the factory seat frames because seats will eventually be fitted that can swivel to face the living area. The wiper motors are removed and the ventilation system modified too. This is because the windshield will sit much farther forward later. The mechanics also attach brackets to the van body. The dashboard will be widened because the body is narrower than the final superstructure. The whole thing will be widened. These are the attachment points for the future larger dashboard. At the same time, a worker removes the factory-fitted filler neck assembly. Because the RV will be wider, longer filler hoses for diesel and AdBlue have to be fitted. The next step involves modifying the body. The rest of the B column needs to be removed. This here will be cut out later to make space for the new filler nozzle. Other panel sections that would otherwise hinder construction of the motorhome are also removed. The assembly workers then apply rust inhibitor to all the raw edges followed by a protective undercoat. They run additional cables at the rear for the taillights. With that, work on the chassis is complete. 
it now heads to another assembly bay. Here, the electrical system of the original van is modified and upgraded. Several hundred meters of additional cable are installed. The living area of the luxury RV will need dozens of electrical sockets and a multitude of electronic devices after all. The wires for the adjustable side view mirrors are installed here as well. So a, full a class A motorhome like this has sized mirrors to fit. Larger areas naturally need larger mirrors. They're about the size of those you'd find on a bus. Another important component is the navigation system, into which a whole series of extra features have been integrated. There's the backup camera and smartphone functions, and there's always special camping software installed that shows the location of the campsites. Another feature of the navigation system is that it warns of underpasses that are too low for the 2.94 meter high luxury RV. The last job has nothing to do with safety or functionality, but aesthetics. It involves the radiator. A worker first cleans it with isopropyl alcohol and then dries it using compressed air. Then the radiator is given a coat of shiny black paint. This is intended to give it a more exclusive look because the radiator will later be visible behind the motorhome's new grille. The chassis conversion work is complete. An employee drives the chassis back to the RV manufacturer's factory, where, within the next 24 hours, it will be transformed into a motorhome. The assembly workers start by laying the subfloor onto a bead of adhesive sealant, pressing it down and screwing it onto the chassis. The subfloor panel is a sandwich of painted aluminum sheets with a water-resistant, heat-insulating rigid foam core. The floor of what will later be the rear garage is made from glass fiber reinforced plastic. Along the edges by the screw points, there's a roughly 40 millimeter wide high density PVC rail for attaching the sidewalls. Here we can see the reinforcing struts that will support the floor. And underneath, there's the storage compartment for longer, bulky items. This is where the tanks for fresh water and grey water, that is, wastewater, will be installed. Heated, of course, so the vehicle can be used in winter. The workers now install the new wheel arches above the front wheels. They're made from foamed plastic. This is lighter than steel sheets and deadens the noise made by gravel. Also made from foamed plastic is the substructure that will support the new dashboard. Final assembly takes place on an assembly line. In 16 hours or two full workdays, the motorhome will be finished. The first job, installing the tanks for fresh and wastewater. Each can hold around 180 liters of liquid. Like the tanks themselves, the tank service module, including water pump and drainage valve, is heated. And thus, four seasons capable. The next component is important for the safety of passengers traveling in the living area of the motorhome, the base plate for the seatbelt frame. This is what the seatbelt frame will be bolted to once the floor panel is installed, so each seat is equipped with a seatbelt for use when the vehicle is in motion. This is the substructure that the belt frame will be bolted to later. Over here we have a so-called inverter. It converts the 12 volts of the body shell batteries to 230 volts, so you're self-sufficient and can still run a 230 volt coffee machine even when not hooked up. This particular inverter is a special order though and together with a third 95 amp hour battery costs around 4,500 euros extra. The assembly workers install heat exchangers, that is, hot water radiators throughout the vehicle. 
The luxury RV needs dozens of them. The Fiat Ducato standard heater is nowhere near powerful enough to heat the over 30 cubic meter interior of the motorhome. Work on the subfloor is completed. The workers now place the heated floor on top of it using a vacuum lifter. It's covered with wear-resistant PVC in yacht decking look. Great care must be taken when lowering it into place. It's essential that no cables, hoses, or pipes get trapped. Rectifying a mistake like that afterwards would be extremely difficult, if not impossible. The assembly workers only screw it down once they are absolutely certain everything fits. The technicians now install the seatbelt frame with the seatbelts for passengers in the lounge seating area. The work continues on the hydraulic lift. Here, the cabling for the electrically operated step is installed. Air suspension costs around 11,000 euros. This optional extra comes with a useful additional device. The automatic leveling system that makes sure the vehicle is always completely horizontal when parked at the campsite. The system essentially consists of four hydraulic jacks and automatically levels the vehicle at the touch of a button. An assembly worker connects yet another additional device that is important in winter, a so-called frost protection valve. Should the temperature of the water system in the motorhome fall below freezing, the water would expand and could damage the system. So if the heating isn't on, the frost protection valve automatically dumps the water in this situation to prevent the system from getting damaged. The work on the hydraulic lift is complete. From now on, the assembly line will govern the work speed. The motorhome is now pulled forward by a roller in the conveyor track by exactly 37 centimeters a minute. The Knaus Sun E900 here is a version that has almost all the optional extras. Instead of the usual two holding tanks for fresh and wastewater, it has a total of four. Why? The customer specified a macerating toilet for this vehicle, which means the excrement gets chopped up before being stored in a separate tank. There's even a camera, so the driver can see on the display when the vehicle is in position over the dump station before activating the discharge valve. An extra that costs around 2,500 euros. Next, the assemblers install the gas lines and pipes for the water and wastewater systems. Gas is needed for the stove, fridge, and heating system, which can alternatively run on electricity as well. Water pipes are needed for the heat exchangers, that is, the radiators, and for the sink, bathroom, and toilet. The pipes marked with a blue stripe are for cold water, those with a red stripe for hot. Next, the workers install the furniture. The furniture for the luxury motorhome is made here in the company's own in-house cabinet making shop. The base material is water resistant, veneered plywood, so-called multiplex. This material is dimensionally stable while being both light and rigid. A CNC router cuts the pieces for the furniture from large boards. Special software ensures that as few offcuts are produced as possible. Because the edges of many furniture elements are visible, they have to be veneered too. This is done mainly by machine.
where edges are exposed to a lot of wear and tear, like around tables and work surfaces, the workers in the cabinet making shop manually apply three millimeter thick so-called edge banding made of plastic. These strips are glued on and then cut flush. Excess material is milled off afterwards. Polishing, cleaning, finished. When it comes to the interior of a motorhome, stability is crucial. And this depends largely on the mechanical connections, some of which are installed by this machine. It drills holes for dowels, screw fittings, and fasteners, and presses them into the wood. At the end of the machining line, the finished furniture element is removed. In this case, a partition wall for a kitchen base unit. Here we can see the cabinet connectors and screw fittings for the wall and work surface that have been drilled and pressed in. These, for instance, are holes for the shelf support pegs. These are holes for dowels. And a screw goes through here. The cutoffs from the cabinet shop that do not contain plastic end up here, in the RV constructor's own combined heat and power station. Other wood waste, like single-use pallets and packaging materials, is recycled here, too. Larger items are shredded first before being incinerated in three large boilers. The waste heat is used to generate hot water and heat all of the production floors and office buildings. The finished furniture elements from the cabinet making shop are assembled into complete fitted units by the workers. Here, they're building one of the largest pieces of furniture for the luxury Sun E900 RV, the base for the bed, which borders the garage unit at the rear. We're basically standing in the garage. This is the garage of the RV. This is the rear view of the bed. The bed frames go up here to the left and right. So this is the middle of the sleeping area. That's the step. Here's another storage compartment. The assembly workers install an ambient LED lighting strip above the step. This will later guide the occupants safely to bed when it's dark. All that remains is for the drawers to be installed, and the bed base unit is ready for installation. Further down the production floor, workers are fitting the kitchen units with appliances. Special care is required when installing the stove, because it uses gas. We have to make sure that the connections are 100% gas tight. The gas line has to be tightened with a specific torque to make sure it doesn't leak. The gas distribution valve for the stove, fridge, and heating system is especially critical. In the worst case, any leaks here could lead to an explosion. The furniture is manufactured just in time, shortly before being installed in the motorhome. This allows the manufacturer to save on storage space. Before the furniture is fitted, the workers first install the heating system. It uses gas or electricity to heat the water for the radiators and underfloor heating system. The technicians bundle all the pipes and hoses together with cable ties to keep them out of the way while the furniture is being installed. The kitchen block is the first large element to be fitted. And once again, it's critical that nothing gets crushed beneath the units. The automatic conveyor pulls the motorhome to the next workstation. 
here, the second kitchen block with fridge freezer and the toilet are installed. As with the gas lines, it's essential that everything is securely connected. A leak here would no doubt cause the future owners of the luxury RV to raise a stink. An RV build is subject to tight time constraints. The assembly workers cannot afford to make any mistakes. The manufacturer offers over 220 different floor plan configurations and equipment options. Every worker has to be familiar with them to avoid any delays, or worse, a standstill on the assembly line. All RV variants are based on one of four basic models. Type 1 is a 6-meter-long converted van, a caravanning utility vehicle, or CUV for short. Price point, 42 to 50,000 euros. It's equipped with a complete kitchen and bathroom, with sink, shower, and toilet. The CUV has a double bed at the rear and seating area at the front that can be converted into a children's bed. Type 2, a Class C cab over style for 50 to 60,000 euros. Although just five and a half meters in length, this motorhome has an additional double bed above the cab. Also converting the seating area allows it to sleep a total of six. Every centimeter is used here. To get to the toilet, you have to slide the sink out of the way. Type 3, a so-called semi-integrated motorhome. The only part of the basic vehicle, in this case an MAN that is kept unchanged, is the cab. This model is configured for two people and the interior is far more luxurious than that of the CUV or Class C. Price point, between 60 and 80,000 euros. Type 4 is the premium class. This fully integrated class is a motorhome with three axles and is almost nine meters long. It costs between 120 and 150,000 euros. A lavish interior with a double bed at the rear, bathroom with shower and a separate toilet. It also features a luxury kitchen, a real leather seating area, and an extra drop-down bed for two people above the cab. The garage unit at the back can accommodate two e-bikes or a scooter. Because this luxury RV already weighs over four tons unladen, it cannot be driven with just any driver's license. You need at least a special C1 license for trucks up to seven and a half tons. Back at the assembly line, the next job is installing the seating group. It forms part of the dinette. Seat belts are provided for two of the seats, so four people can be aboard while driving. Hot water radiators are installed behind the seating group. The bed frame at the rear is the last major built-in element. The assembly workers now join all the furniture elements together and secure them to the floor. This is crucial because the last thing they want is for anything to squeak or rattle when the vehicle is on the move. For this reason, the units are not just screwed together, but also interconnected with dowels. This gives the structure the necessary stability. Once the interior is fitted, the external walls of the motorhome are installed. The sidewalls are the largest elements of the luxury RV. They consist of two painted aluminum sheets bonded to a water-resistant, self-supporting and heat-insulating rigid foam core. The worker selects the desired component from the menu of the CNC router, and then it's ready to go. I just need to press start. And the CNC machine runs through its program. It cuts the exterior shape, like the wheel arches and front contour. Then the openings for the doors, windows, storage compartments and service hatches. And finally, the mounting slots. If everything's set up perfectly, it's accurate to the millimeter, so there are no gaps and nowhere moisture can accumulate. 
That's why the machine needs to work with millimeter precision. The machined sidewall now passes through the cleaning station before heading to the assembly line. Before the sidewalls are attached, some pre-assembly work still needs to be done. Due to a lack of space, this is carried out above the assembly line. Here, the workers install the windows and glue velour to the interior sections of the wall that will later be visible, for aesthetic reasons and to provide additional soundproofing. The doors for the storage compartments and service hatches are installed here too. Applying the decals to the exterior is skilled work. A mixture of water with a squirt of dish soap is sprayed onto the film. It takes teamwork, skill, and great care when applying the films to ensure that no bubbles get trapped beneath them. Meanwhile, nearly all the windows have been installed. Flush-fitting windows in the case of this luxury RV. In contrast with surface-mounted windows, they lie almost flush with the outer skin. This reduces wind noise. If we take a look at the inside of the window, you get a rough idea of how a surface-mounted window would look on the outside. It's not an exact comparison, though. The advantage here is that we've been able to integrate both the sunshade and fly screen. Which means they can be used together. The window can be opened without mosquitoes getting in. The moment of truth. When attaching the two largest elements of the motorhome, it will quickly become apparent whether all others involved have worked accurately. The assembly workers now screw the sidewalls to the chassis. Because it sags a bit in the middle, due to the four and a half meter wheelbase, they use a kind of car jack to lift it back up a little. Only when sidewall and chassis are flush do they screw them together. The interior fittings are now also secured to the sidewalls, and the workers install yet more radiators. The luxury RV is slowly taking shape. Next, the plastic front cap is fitted. The wiper motors and LED headlights have already been pre-installed. The workers apply an adhesive sealant to the attachment points. An additional sealing strip provides extra sound insulation and prevents engine fumes from entering the interior. Adhesive sealant is squeezed from the joint when the front cap is screwed down. It has to be carefully removed. At the same time, workers fit trim panels and install the shower cubicle. The interior walls of the shower are glued instead of screwed. This ensures that there are no holes through which water could penetrate later. Next, the rear cap is mounted. It's made from glass fiber reinforced plastic. An assembly worker lines the storage compartment. The mini garage is heated for a good reason. Things back here won't get too cold. So if someone is transporting an e-bike fitted with lithium ion batteries, which are very sensitive to cold, they won't get damaged. Meanwhile, the fittings have been installed in the shower cubicle. All that's left is to mount the cubicle doors. They consist of an aluminum frame and panes of scratch-resistant plastic. It's lighter than glass and unbreakable.
Behind the front cap, the workers now install an electrically operated blind. It serves an important function not only when driving, but when living in the luxury RV too. This roller blind can cover the entire windshield to provide privacy or block out light if you want to sleep during the day. It can also be used while driving to prevent sun glare. The next job is a complicated one, installing the drop-down bed for two people. It's too heavy to be lifted in by hand, so it has to be installed while the enormous assembly can still be maneuvered in from above. Done. The bed is in. The mock-up and prototype construction department is the creative workshop of the factory. This is where all built-in components are planned and tested on full-scale mock-ups. The workers here are an extension of the design and construction department. They put into practice the things designed on the computer there. We have to optimize the processes so that they can be implemented later on the production floor. They're worked out in collaboration with production to ensure that all the installation and assembly line processes work smoothly. The prototype construction department is more or less self-sufficient. Next to the assembly shop, there's an extra cabinet-making shop. This is where the built-in units and structural components for new products are made such as furniture units that have to be redesigned for the prototypes. This five-axis CNC router is fed with data from the design department and carries out its instructions with millimeter precision. In the assembly shop, the technicians are working on a new development a six and a half meter long Weinsberg brand Class C RV. The main focus here is on minimizing weight. To achieve this, they're testing new techniques and materials for connecting the individual components. It now has to be tested and assembled so we can see how easy the parts are to work with how the parts respond during assembly, and how easy are they to manufacture. And ultimately, when the vehicle is finished, is it stable and durable? So we're currently trying to pre-plan and assemble this vehicle as efficiently as possible. Today, the prototype construction workers are checking whether the newly developed roof of the Class C RV can be installed without a problem. The final preparations. The assembly workers secure all the cables so they don't get trapped when the roof is lowered into place. Then they apply an adhesive sealant to the upper edge of the walls of the RV. The over seven meter long roof is maneuvered into place by a vacuum lifter. The new roof isn't just difficult to maneuver, but to install as well. Because of its length and the fact that the vehicle has a fairly curvy profile, it's quite tricky getting the roof positioned correctly and set down on the vehicle properly. The benefit to the customer is that there aren't any edges or gaps that could leak because it's fabricated in one piece. The roof installation was completed without a hitch. Now the technicians just have to fix the front cap around the cab over section. The floor panel for the next prototype has already arrived. It too is destined to become a Class C RV, but this time half a meter shorter than the one that just had its roof fitted. Constructing the same vehicle but shorter is a new challenge, of course. So. This is the floor. We're now pre-installing the wheel arches, gas lines, installations, etc. that are all under the floor. 
Then we join it to the chassis. Back at the assembly line for the luxury RV, the next task is to install the roof. The assembly workers first apply an adhesive sealant to the mating surfaces. All the cables that come from the roof now have to go into this channel here so we don't overlook and trap any. Installing the roof is a complicated and time-consuming job. But the conveyor moves the motorhome relentlessly along the assembly line by 37 centimeters a minute. When attaching the roof, the workers use an oversized clamp. This presses the sidewalls together, which bulge outward a little due to their length of almost nine meters. The workers apply a sealant to the screw holes and then glue on an aluminum sealing strip. On top of this, they mount a tilt rail. Jigs ensure that the tilt rail is positioned correctly. My co-workers will now screw it into place. This compresses the aluminum sealing strip, making the joint watertight. The finishing touch is given by a trim rail covering the edge where roof and sidewall meet. The next job, mounting the satellite dish. On a mastic pad, the workers attach a mounting plate with grub screws. It's then glued and screwed in place. The assembly worker wipes off the excess adhesive sealant, and then the satellite dish can be bolted on. Work on the exterior of the luxury RV continues. Next, the hood is installed. It has to open and close without sticking. With the luxury motorhome being nearly nine meters in length and over two meters 30 wide, the mirrors are of a similar size to those found on a bus. There is no door allowing direct access to the front passenger seat, only the main door to the living area. And it has to open and close smoothly too. A worker screws on the skirt panel to the bottom of the sidewall and applies a chrome trim strip. Once the wheel arch covers are installed, work on the exterior of the luxury RV is almost complete. Next up, the first important safety check, the gas leak detection test using compressed air. This is carried out by a suitably qualified and authorized worker. The gas system is pressurized to over 150 millibars. This is kept up for 10 minutes, and from a purely legal standpoint, it's okay for the pressure to drop by 10 millibars, but we are on the side of safety. Anything over 0.003 bar is considered leaky. In that case, the entire gas system would have to be re-inspected. That beeping sound means that the 10-minute waiting period has expired. And we have a deviation of 2.9 millibars. That's next to nothing. So we deem this vehicle to be gas tight. For the test inside the vehicle, the technician connects a gas cylinder fitted with a pressure regulator. The previous test was conducted at 150 millibars. Now, the operating pressure is just 30 millibars. The gas burners on the stovetop are all lit. My colleague will now test another important safety feature. Can you turn it off? After a few seconds, you'll hear a click. Click. That was the click I mentioned. For safety reasons, it's fitted with a solenoid valve. If the flame were to get blown out or go out for whatever reason, gas would continue to be released into the vehicle. If the flame goes out, the solenoid valve has to close after 10 seconds. Then no more gas can escape. Everything's okay here as well. The technicians test the heating system in gas operating mode via the water. 
It's set to cold now, we turn it to warm, and then you can already tell it's a few degrees warmer, so you know that the heating system is working. The motorhome is raised up on the hydraulic lift once more. The workers fit the wheel well liners. Any cables that are still dangling are stowed in their designated bays. Then, the service and inspection hatch covers are fitted. All that remains is to connect the wastewater pipes for the toilet and apply a coat of underbody sealant. Back at the assembly line, the motorhome is nearing completion. As the dashboard area has been extended forward and widened, a new cover has to be fitted. Comfort comes as standard with this luxury RV. The real leather seats have air suspension that smooths out bumps while driving. The assembly workers use a special crane to lift the seats into the vehicle. The seats, which can be swiveled to face the dinette, are electrically adjustable. The last major job on the exterior is installing the enormous panorama windshield. The glazing specialist attaches adjustment jigs to the bodywork. These allow the glass to be precisely aligned. The workers apply a special adhesive sealant around the edges of the windshield. A few turns of the aligner and the windshield sits perfectly. The technicians fix the glass in position with adhesive tape. It takes an hour for the sealant to harden sufficiently so that the glass can no longer move. The last station on the assembly line. Final inspection. Hey. Hi. Any major issues, constructional or production errors? Well, we don't really have any constructional issues anymore. We have resolved those. A few adjustment issues, but that's my job. <laughs> so, we could say that everything's okay so far? Everything's okay so far. Here's how it works. We build a prototype for the series, then we build two pre-production vehicles. And this is the first production batch of five vehicles following the pre-production run. I just asked whether there are any constructional issues, and he said no. Next, we see if we have any manufacturing problems, such as if any storage compartments can't be installed because they can't be made to fit. And the third thing is, can it be constructed like this later on in the assembly line? So having now built eight vehicles, the series is ready for full production. We can build the vehicle in series as it is right away. Because each motorhome is custom built, each has a different dry weight. Prior to weighing, the assembly workers attach an exhaust extraction system. Because the Sun E900 is over 8.8 .8 meters long, it has to be weighed in two stages. First, the weight on the front axle. Due to its extensive equipment list, it tips the scales at 2,490 kilograms. And the weight at the rear, 1,780 which adds up to 4,270 kilograms. At prices ranging between 120 and 150,000 euros, everything in and on the vehicle must be perfect, function correctly, and of course, there mustn't be any damage. The workers in the quality control department inspect every aspect of the luxury motorhome in detail. Here, for example, a scratch has been discovered. We'll now have to swap this part out. It's a lot of work, but like I said, it has to be delivered in perfect condition. And here, a cross tells our co-workers doing the remedial work that something's happened inside. So when I open it, I can't quite tell 
Ah, okay, there's some damage here. Here's another cross. We'll have to check what's inside. Right. There's some damage which presumably happened during installation. The part will be swapped out for a new one. The search for issues continues on the exterior of the luxury RV. There's another cross here. Let's see what the problem with this is. Uh -huh. It's the adjustment of the door. It needs to be readjusted up here. We'll get someone to do it now. You see, you need to set the hinge back a little. A minor issue, but one that could still be irritating for the future owner. It only takes a few seconds to sort out. Yeah. Okay, it's good. So we can remove the cross now. The door is repaired. The spacing is even. Nearly two hours later, all of the defects have been taken care of. The only thing missing now is the leather upholstery for the dinette. The luxury motorhome is now finished. Having spent 16 hours under construction on the assembly line and following the quality control inspection, there are two final tests still to be done. The first test has to be performed outdoors. Do the television and satellite systems work? Theory's manager, Jürgen Spanbauer, first activates the display inside the vehicle. This simultaneously causes the satellite dish on the roof to rise up. It automatically searches for the pre-configured satellites. After 30 seconds, the dish has oriented itself. Television programs can now be received. Anyone wanting to watch television outside can order an outdoor screen for an extra 2,500 euros. The vehicle now heads to the other side of the factory. Its destination, the final test station and probably the most important for a vacation home on wheels, the rain simulator. This will reveal whether the vehicle is absolutely watertight. The sprinkler system can be remotely controlled from within the motorhome. The program takes a whole hour to complete. During this time, the worker carefully checks whether water is getting in anywhere. The outcome? No leaks. The luxury RV is now ready to be shipped to the authorized dealer. Motorhomes manufacturers are currently enjoying a golden age. The demand for vacation homes on wheels has never been greater. And the factory in Lower Bavaria is also profiting from the boom and the desire to travel in the comfort of one's own home.